In just one year, 41 people lost their lives on a single stretch of road in Queensland. That is one person every nine days. This isn't a remote track, it's the Bruce Highway, a 1,679-kilometer artery that is the lifeblood for over 60% of the state's population. It has been called the Highway of Shame, a road with a fatal crash rate three to five times higher than major highways in other Australian states. Every day, more than 100,000 vehicles gamble on its southern sections, mixing giant B-double trucks with tourist caravans and daily commuters. So how do you fix a road this long, this vital and this deadly? What colossal feats of engineering does it take to tame Australia's most dangerous highway? The story of the Bruce Highway begins in 1934, when the old Great North Coast Road was renamed after politician Harry Bruce. Its job was simple, connect Queensland's coastal towns. But as Queensland grew, so did the traffic. The road that was once adequate became the state's essential backbone, carrying nearly all the freight, tourists and local traffic up the coast. The problem was, the highway's design never kept up with the demand. Long stretches remained as just two lanes, with no physical barrier between cars travelling at 110 kilometres per hour. The mix of vehicles, from massive trucks to slow-moving caravans, created a constant source of frustration and danger. Then, between 2010 and 2011, catastrophic floods washed over the state, cutting the highway in multiple places and exposing its extreme vulnerability. This was the breaking point. It became clear that small fixes were not enough. The highway needed a complete overhaul. The problem was clear. The road was too small, too dangerous, and too easily cut by floods. The solution would require a complete re-engineering of the highway from the ground up, focusing on three critical battlegrounds, safety, flooding, and capacity. To transform the highway of shame, engineers launched a massive multi-billion dollar campaign. This wasn't just about laying new asphalt, it was about redesigning the road to forgive human error, and withstand nature's power. The plan attacked the highway's three biggest weaknesses head-on. The most urgent task was to stop the crashes. Year after year, the deadliest accidents were head-on collisions and cars running off the road. Engineers deployed four key weapons to fight back. First is the wide center line treatment. This simple but brilliant idea involves replacing the single painted line, dividing the highway with two lines set about one meter apart. That small gap is a game changer. It creates a buffer zone that gives a drifting driver precious extra seconds to correct their mistake before crossing into oncoming traffic. This single, low-cost treatment has been proven to reduce devastating head-on crashes by around 43%. So far, 255 kilometers of the Bruce Highway have received this life-saving feature. The second weapon works hand-in-hand -hand with the first. Audio tactile line markings you might know these as rumble strips. They are small, raised bumps made of a durable material called thermoplastic, which is mixed with tiny glass beads so they reflect light at night. When a car's tire runs over them, they create a loud rumbling sound and a strong vibration through the steering wheel. This acts as a physical alarm clock for a driver who is tired or distracted, two of the biggest killers on long straight roads. The third engineering solution tackles a major human factor, Impatience. On a long two-lane road, getting stuck behind a slow-moving truck or caravan can lead drivers to take huge risks with dangerous overtaking maneuvers. To solve this, the program has built 100 new, dedicated overtaking lanes. These are extra lanes, usually between one and two kilometers long, that provide a safe and legal window to pass slower vehicles, removing the temptation for drivers to make a fatal mistake. Finally, to prevent cars from leaving the road entirely, engineers have installed a massive 652 kilometers of roadside safety barriers. That's enough to stretch from Brisbane almost to Rockhampton. These aren't just simple guardrails. They are highly engineered systems designed to absorb the energy of a crash. Some are rigid concrete barriers used where there is no room for movement. Others are semi-rigid steel W-beams or flexible wire rope fences that are designed to catch a vehicle slowing it down and redirecting it away from hazards like trees or steep embankments. Just one part of the upgrade, the Mackay Ring Road, required 620 tonnes of reinforced steel for its overpass bridges alone. 
But what happens when the danger isn't another car, but the weather itself? The Bruce Highway crosses 26 rivers and vast flat floodplains. Every wet season, sections of the road disappear underwater, cutting off towns and stopping the flow of essential goods for days at a time. To fight this, engineers had to think bigger, raising the highway itself above the water. A perfect example is the Horton River floodplain south of Townsville. This area was so flood-prone that in 2019, the highway was closed for six straight days. The solution was a colossal $514 million project to upgrade a 13.5-kilometer section of the road. This involved completely replacing low-level bridges with new, higher, and wider structures. The new bridge over the Horton River is now 10 meters wide, a huge improvement on the old, narrow 6.2-meter bridge. The scale of this one project was immense. It required 23,900 cubic meters of concrete, enough to fill more than nine Olympic-sized swimming pools. Because the road can still be covered by water in the most extreme floods, engineers used a special foam-stabilized pavement. This is made by mixing bitumen with water to create a foam, which is then blended with the road base. The result is a foundation that is much more resistant to water damage, allowing the road to be reopened quickly after floodwaters go down. Another major floodproofing project is the Tiaro Bypass. The highway currently runs right through the small town of Tiaro, which sits in the middle of three flood zones with no detour available. When it floods, the town is completely cut off. The solution is a new nine-kilometer four-lane highway that bypasses the town entirely. Crucially, this new bypass is engineered to withstand a one in 100 year flood event, meaning it will stay open through all but the most historic and catastrophic floods, keeping Queensland connected. In other areas, such as at Dalachy Road near Tully, the solution involves installing large reinforced concrete box culverts under the highway to help safely drain massive amounts of rainwater. The final battleground for engineers is capacity. In the north, the highway is a rural road but near Brisbane and other major cities, it becomes a congested urban motorway. On the stretch just north of Brisbane, the highway carries up to 165,000 vehicles every single day. This extreme traffic volume leads to constant gridlock and a high number of rear-end collisions. The most obvious solution is highway duplication, turning a four-lane road into a six-lane one. One such project, widening an eight-kilometer section between Calundra Road and the Sunshine Motorway, gives a sense of the scale. This relatively short stretch required over 380,000 tons of asphalt. To put that number in perspective, that is more than the weight of five of the world's largest aircraft carriers. But in the most congested areas, just adding more lanes isn't enough. Engineers are using a cleverer solution called collector distributor roads. Think of them as local service roads that run parallel to the main highway lanes. On the planned upgrade between Doles Rocks Road and Anzac Avenue, these roads will separate local traffic from long distance traffic. If you only need to travel one or two exits, you use the collector distributor road. This keeps slower, merging cars out of the main high speed lanes, which dramatically reduces the dangerous weaving that causes so much congestion and so many accidents. This monumental effort comes with a historic price tag. The latest phase of the project is a $9 billion targeted safety program, part of a total investment in the highway that now exceeds $17 billion. This cost is shared between the Australian and Queensland governments on an 80 to 20 split, with the federal government contributing $7.2 billion. This funding deal itself caused controversy as the federal government had been pushing for a 50-50 split on national projects, making the Bruce Highway a special exception due to its dire safety record. The decision led other states to demand similar funding for their own major roads. The project has also faced political criticism, with accusations of funding being delayed or used as a tool to win votes before an election. Some industry groups have also voiced concerns that the project's timeline is too long. The entire program is a massive logistical challenge, requiring complex detours and years of construction, all while keeping Australia's busiest highway open. The ultimate goal is to raise the entire 1,679-kilometer highway to a minimum three-star safety rating by 2032, an achievement that road safety experts estimate will cut the risk of death or serious injury in half. 
from a dangerous highway of shame to a modern, resilient and safer economic lifeline, the transformation of the Bruce Highway is one of Australia's largest and most critical infrastructure projects. Through a combination of clever engineering and massive investment, this decades-long effort is redesigning the road from the ground up. With 172 new bridges, over 650 kilometres of safety barriers and hundreds of kilometres of wider, stronger and smarter road, this project is not just about moving cars. It is about saving lives and securing the future of Queensland for generations to come. If you found this look into one of Australia's biggest engineering challenges fascinating, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss our next exploration into the world's most incredible mega projects. Let us know in the comments what project you want to see next.